Hello faithful viewers and welcome back to another Transformers review. This time we're looking at the Transformers Legacy Voyager Class Cybertron Override from the Speedia 500 subline. And straight off the gate I will say this figure is absolutely gorgeous. In visual design, in basically everything that this figure does, Mwah, chef's kiss. So she turns into a Velocitronian supercar of some kind. Velocitron is Speed Planet, where she is from. It's so fateful to be the original Cybertron version of her. It's uncanny how good looking this is. She rolls beautifully. I had a little bit of trouble trying to get her to roll before filming this because I got her the other day and managed to get her rolling perfectly. And then just before this, difficulty. But as you can see here, she rolls perfectly. So great. Um, primary colour scheme, white and red, with a little bit of black on the back of the vehicle here. You've got a translucent red windscreen there. You've got her head poking up, so she does have visible head syndrome, but the original version did, so what of it? I can let it pass. Uh, you've got gold rimmed tyres. You've got a bit of blue on the front there. Moving on to the back, you've got the exhaust, which also double as her handgun, which we'll get into in a little bit. Moving on to the underside, you can see where her arms are, so you can infer what becomes what, unfortunately. But hey-ho, we can let it slide. Overall, this is a beautiful-looking vehicle mode. So, so faithful to the original version of Override. I, I can't believe how well they've managed to pull off this figure. The only little detractor about this vehicle mode, which I think is a common consensus among us reviewers, is that we'd have liked to see a little bit more paint here, where the feet are, just for the sake of the headlights of this vehicle mode. Just a little bit of an extra thing would have just helped this pop even more. But despite this, oh my God, it's stunning. To transform override is a fairly simple transformation sequence, thankfully. So the first thing that we want to be doing is focusing on the front of the car here. So if we just disconnect it from these very ooh, questionable clear tabs, on the base of this. Whether these are going to be subject to breakage in the future is a big question, so just be careful with tapping this in. But disconnect them and then split the front half of the vehicle and continue to basically pull out on these bits to untap the legs and hinge them down and then reconnect them like so until they snap in place. Really cool transformation feature, got to say. So pull hinge down and then push to snap it back in right around about where the knee is continuing with the legs then we're going to take these gappage filler bits here just fold them just like that on either side and then we're going to pull the feet and the heels down and then we're just going to rotate this back and into place there's little notches there there's a slot right there as well so just try and line it up as you're plugging it in and then rotate the legs forward and that's them all done taking a look at the top of the figure we're just going to spin her around and then disconnect the fists from these sticks that they basically grasp into these slot into the open fists that's pretty cool and then continuing up here, we're just going to disconnect from the shoulders. They do actually tab in together and then rotate the wheels all the way around. We use one of the back ends of them. So just get them situated like that. And then we're going to pull up on this and just hinge this back like that. And then we're going to take a look here and we're just going to disconnect that tab. There's quite a lot of intricate tapping in this, so just bear with. There's a tab there that goes into a hole right there. So just pull it out and get these hinged down like so. So the same thing on this side. Just hinge it down like that. Continue pulling all of this back down. And then take the windscreen, bring it forward until it snaps down and in place. And then make sure the shoulders are forward like this push on these pins and they will slide roughly into place. There are again notches on the very inside which line up with tabs. 
So you've just got to get it right. It's incredibly hard to show on camera, but you've just got to get it right and also bend this bit back and then there are two connecting points up here. There's the red tabs on the collars there and then there are some slots there as well. So you've got to simultaneously try and get them in place whilst keeping it all collapsed. And when you've finally got it all lined up, it just slaps together nice and neatly. It's the same thing on this side. Keep that pushed in as you're rotating all of this back. Line up the back bit first and then deal with the collar bit last. And it all just slots into a nice neat package. And with that, once you have rotated the wrists 180 degrees, that is overrides transformation sequence fully completed. And doesn't she look beautiful? What an excellent modern interpretation of this figure this truly is there's no backpack to speak of all of this is integrated nicely into the figure this is a removable weapon which we'll have a look at briefly in a minute but that profile wow just wow what a stunning modern update for this figure this is taking a good look at that head sculpt beautiful gold face blue eyes blue head crest angular just iconic in every way now the back of the head it does look like it should be red light piping but uh, they've painted over the eyes so that's kind of irrelevant in this case continuing on with the rest of the body you've got the translucent window still as the chest you've got black shoulders gold highlights little specks of blue on the chest there as well uh gold like cuffs on the wrists and everything and then they even keep like the slanted look of the legs with the tires now facing forward on the front them all being at an angle it's just so incredibly good now much like with the armada starscream update they've done away with the gimmicks from the original lines that these figures are based on for override what it was was her gun here which you can just detach from the back like that the way it plugs in also is a mini com port sort of thing it just integrates so flush with everything it's almost invisible it almost doesn't even look like a detachable weapon but it is and it, it oh man i can thank adam about this for ages so you've got this thing now with the original figure it was a cyber key gimmick and you would slot a cyber key into the back there and these guns would flip forward nowadays it's just a manual thing and by sacrificing gimmickry like that, you can now afford the figure a whole lot more in terms of, say, articulation and just general playability. But yeah, you've got that. Nice white barrels, nice red tips to them. She can hold it in her hand like so. Slots in there nice and securely. You have these fins on top which are poseable for some reason. So you can flip them all the way up or you can flip them all the way down. I like to keep them at a slight diagonal angle just for that whole feeling of aerodynamicism. So yeah, that's nice. In terms of articulation, Override can turn her head technically 360 degrees, although you've got to be careful of the shoulder tabs. So you can see here, it's kind of stopping her from turning all the way around, but in theory you can. Uh, in terms of the shoulder, you've got 360 degrees of rotation at the shoulder. You can move it out that far. You can rotate it at the upper arm, thanks to a mushroom peg, 360. You've got a 90 degree bend at the elbow and you've got 360 degrees of swivel at the wrist. At the waist, you do actually have a little bit of waist rotation there, but only so far before it bumps into the backpack. In terms of a spread, let's just move her arms out of the way. In terms of the spread, beautiful spread, lovely. And then you've got a nice forward kick like that, 90 degrees. You've got a back kick of human proportions. You've got an upper leg swivel of 360 degrees, thanks to another mushroom peg. You've got a 90 degree bend at the knee. And then in terms of the feet, you have a little bit of up and down wiggle and you've got ankle pivot as well. So you can pull off a lot of dynamic poses with this figure, excellent articulation. For a size comparison, here is Override next to fellow legacy figure. This is the update for Armada Starscream. Here she is with Energon Hotshot. 
I did see the updated version of Armada Hotshot in Smith's Toys where I got override from. Very tempted to pick it up. I don't think I will, but I do think that the new Armada Hotshot is a beautiful looking figure as well. Here's override next to Cybertron Sideways. And then here's override next to good old Mysterio. So there we go, that is the modern update of Transformers Cybertron Override. Also known as Nitro Convoy, was it, in uh, Japan? But I digress, this is a beautiful figure. Excellent articulation, excellent paintwork, excellent sculpting, excellent transformation, just fabulous all round. This is a well-deserved modern update. I think compared to the update for Starscream, which I have previously reviewed, I think Override is the better figure. She feels so much better. Now, there were a few QC issues with that Starscream figure that I did mention in that review. No QC issues whatsoever with Override here. What a fabulous, fabulous figure she has turned out to be and a much appreciated addition to my collection i'm so happy with her i highly highly recommend this speedier 500 override Let's just get her absolutely get her you won't be disappointed thank you everybody so much for stopping by and checking out this video like and subscribe if you haven't already and share it around to help out the channel and until the next time see you all later